Well, good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to this important kickoff event for International Week 2021. We are so glad you could join us. My name is Lise Laporte and I'm the Senior Director at Western International. And we'd like to begin our event today by acknowledging the land that is home to our amazing campus community. We acknowledge that Western University is located on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenapewak, and Chanantan nations on lands connected with the London Township and Sombra Treaties of 1796 and the Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. This land continues to be home to diverse Indigenous peoples, including First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, whom we recognize as contemporary stewards of the land and vital contributors of our society. We are fortunate today to have some remarks from Myrna Kiknoswe, visiting elder at Western's Office of Indigenous Initiatives to provide a traditional opening for International Week. Myrna is from Walpole Island, the Kejwanong territory. Her life journey and personal learning offer her an ever expanding appreciation of indigenous, indigenous knowledges and traditions. And we are grateful for her important message to begin this week of learning and celebration. Wana bajon and the way my gunna duck. Ishkotemakas and quay and each the cars mond of them. A cajun on a donja bar. Buddha water me, O dawa, Nishnabi quay and dow. Nusvi, Milevin, O shagnashi, O bungi. A bajo. I'd like to offer a few words about the land that we are all on the land that are we, we are connected to. From the sky world, to the earth plane, to the underground, we're connected to all things. I say chimigretch to you for taking this moment to acknowledge where you are at, your connection to this creation. With that connection, you also have responsibility for this earth. You have responsibility for all that you see, all that you hear, and all Every place that your feet touch on this creation is your responsibility. So that it's, it's understood because these are part of the natural laws that we're, we were given at the beginning of time. And all colors of man have been given this responsibility. But it is the indigenous or the original people of this land that that were shown and taken care of by the Creator that offered what was needed to maintain that and pass that down from generation to generation. So as you take this time to feel that connection that you have this part of the earth, this part of the sky, this part of underneath the earth to all things that you see and all those things you cannot see. Feel that connection. Feel that place inside of you where the original people were, who were placed here and the knowledge and wisdom they carried forward into the future. All of that knowledge and wisdom is still here with us because we still see the sun every day. We still see the moon at night. We still feel the presence of Creator here on this land, in the trees, in the grasses, and the medicines, all of those things, you can feel that connection, connection to this place. This place that I'm sitting right now is in Bekedranon territory. This is the heart of the Three Fires Confederacy. All nations in, of North America have their own understanding of what is that connection, but we were all given the same teachings. We were all given those things by the Spirit when we were placed here on this land. And this place they now call North America. We have relatives in the South, South America. They are still our family, just as those ones that are here on this land. They are our family. 
Our relatives are here to teach us so that we know without a shadow of a doubt who we are, where we come from and where we're going. So I acknowledge this land and all the, the things that the land has for us to be connected to. And I say, Chimigwech to the earth, Shkagamakwa, who is the one that provides for us? She's still following her original instructions. Now it's our part as humankind to help her because she needs help. She needs help in that acknowledgement of this place so that she too can continue to provide for us into the future, to provide for our children, our grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren that are coming behind us. Because they, they too need to know this. They need to know that they have original instructions and have the responsibility to take care of this creation. Just like to say Chimigwech for listening and acknowledging this place is part of creation. And feel the warmth of the sun on you. And that's part of the sun's responsibility. It's Gisus in our language, the one that travels across the sky. The Ba Gisus Nokomis is the moon who travels during the night. They are still following their original instructions. Everything you see in this creation has those instructions. And they talk to us all the time and nudge us along on our journey to pick up our responsibilities of this land. I say Chimigwech to you for listening and putting these things in your body, your heart, your mind, and your spirit to carry into the future for those ones coming behind us. I say Chimigwech to you, Nakanagana, all my relations, I hope. Thank you, Myrna, for your guidance and wisdom as we focus our thoughts and hearts for the week, again, week ahead. Chimigwech. I'm now pleased to introduce President Alan Shepard uh, to bring some opening remarks as well. Hi, I'm Alan Shepard, President of Western. I'm delighted to welcome you to International Week 2021. International Week is a chance to celebrate the diversity on campus, learn about other cultures, explore global learning for yourselves, and have a little fun along the way. I'm really pleased that Dr. Opio Oloya is launching this week with a talk about equity, diversity, and inclusion, and the experiences of our international students. You might know that there are several thousand international students at Western who enrich our campus community in so many ways. Add to that the mosaic of students who come with different experiences and cultures from across Canada, and what you get is an amazing opportunity to learn from one another. Diversity is one of our great strengths at Western, something to nurture and celebrate. So I hope you'll take part as much as you can, seize this opportunity to expand your world, and take advantage that all of our international community at Western has to offer. Enjoy the week. Thanks to President Shepard for his support as we kick off this week. And so, as Alan said, this week really is about exploring international opportunities, celebrating diversity, and taking advantage of events and activities to enhance our global learning. And so I encourage you all to visit the International Week website at international.uwo.ca to explore all there is to offer and to join our international event platform and our passport contest. So we are privileged to begin this week with an important discussion about equity, diversity, and inclusion, and to hear from our students about the impact of EDI on their experiences here at Western. So before we hear from our panel, I'd like to play this short video prepared by our students, Nyron Moe and Estella Wren, about why diversity matters. Please enjoy. For me, diversity is about inclusion. Creating a space where everyone can feel welcome and included to share their perspective. The ability to welcome every student from different culture, different background. It's because it allows us to connect with other people and other cultures in a way that we wouldn't be able to if we were just like a singular community. Because everyone has super different perspectives that all bring important things to the table and can all contribute something. And it also makes us more accepting and more aware of the world around us. The best thing about having people from around the world in our community is 
getting to make friends that you maybe never would have gotten to meet and getting to learn from each other, the opportunity to hear different people's stories. There is no day that I go back to my room at night that I don't have something new that I didn't learn from another culture. We're not just isolated group of people anymore. We, we need to interact with other people from other countries. It creates a more uh, welcoming space, a more inclusive community for students and everyone who is a part of the Western community. And it just adds overall to like the community of Western and what we want Western to be. I feel like having a diverse campus really uh, allows us to be involved with other people's cultures and experience things that we wouldn't get to otherwise experience and just learn and grow from each other. When you're like a minority or something like that, there's always this part of like you always want to see someone who's like you. The thing surprised me most is how welcoming everyone is. When I first came here, I'm surprised there's a lot of geese on campus because I never see to be honest, I never see these people. <laughs> the best thing about being an international student is Western has a great international community. Western offers a lot of services for international students. We get a lot of support from peer support. We have the international cafe happening each weekend where we can talk to our uh, fellow international students. And we have all kinds of uh, academic supports that we need. What an appropriate and, and great way to open up our session. And so thank you again to Estella and Nyren for putting that video together and to all the students who participated. So now it is my great pleasure uh, to welcome Dr. Opio Aloya, Associate Vice President, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. As you may know, Dr. Aloya joined Western in August, 2021. An integral member of Western's senior leadership team, Dr. Aloya helps to lead, manage, direct, and evaluate EDI values and initiatives at Western, and works closely with diverse groups across campus to promote equity, anti-racism, and accountability. Since coming to Western, Dr. Aloya has been focused on connecting with members of the Western community to understand and appreciate their experiences. In the Western News article announcing his appointment, Dr. Aloya said, the best way forward in my lived experience and knowledge is to listen and see the common meeting place where we will achieve our goals together. It is to respect and to build relationships. Well said. Before we begin our conversation, I would like to thank our student panel who will introduce themselves to you shortly. Amin, Grace, Elman, Freya, Inara, and Panache, thank you for being with us today to share your experiences as international students at Western. We're really looking forward to this conversation. And with that, Dr. Loya, I pass it over to you. Thank you, Liz, uh, for the warm uh, introduction and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the kickoff to the International Week 2021. I'm truly happy to participate in this opening event, uh, to be able to share uh, my story as a newcomer to Canada uh, more than uh, 40 years ago. But more important to listen to the experiences of six Western international students who have joined me this morning to share their experiences. Now, before I get down to talking about my own experiences, I just want to quickly say that international students, as you heard from, from, from them directly, are a big part of who we are as Western. They bring an international dimension, a global perspective that enriches all of us. And for this reason, it is critically important that international students feel welcome and are welcome to Western, and that every effort is made to include them in all aspects of learning, living, and play. And to that end, I want to specifically thank you, Liz, and your team at Western International for working very hard every single day in welcoming and supporting our international students here on campus. Your effort, support, uh, allow our international student to feel at home, away from home. And now I know a little bit about that. Uh, I arrived here in Canada on June the 7th, uh, 1981. A little bit of background. I was a student at Macquarie University in Uganda. And Makero University is located in the capital city of Kampala. 
but I did not grow in the city. I grew up in the village. So it, really my experience at Makere was also new. I was new in the big city, learning to be at the university. We became involved in student politics. And within a short time, I had to leave Uganda and flee to neighboring country, Kenya. And that would have been on my 6th, 1981. And then three months later, uh, after we contacted the Canadian High Commission in Nairobi, uh, with the UN, they were able to arrange briefly for me and three others to be airlifted as refugee students uh, to Canada. And so we arrived here on June 7, 1981, uh, via uh, Italy, via Rome, and landing in a foreign country. So I was a, I was a foreigner in, my, in the capital city of Kampala. I was a foreigner in Nairobi, Kenya. And now here I was, three months later, in a completely new country and a completely new culture. And so uh, I, I just want to read um, a short excerpt of what my first full day in Canada um, was like. This is from uh, a memoir that I've written. It still has to be published. Uh, have, this is the second draft now. So I'm just going to read a, a you know, very quick uh, synopsis of that. My first full day in Canada began with a summer course in world geography taught by Professor Brian Osborne at Queen's University. He was a jovial man, friendly, and who much preferred to wear turtleneck sweaters and a jacket. It was a small class, maybe 20 students in all. All of them were white except me. Unlike my lecturers at McCarry University, Professor Osborne was very informal, engaging the students directly, debating issues, questioning assumptions, and providing ideas. I was not used to that kind of informal interaction between students and professor. The topic that day was about acid rain. The first time I heard about rain being dangerous, something that alarmed me greatly. From what I could gather from the bits and pieces of the conversation in the class, because everybody spoke so fast, I could hardly understand a thing of what they were saying. The rain was stripping the vegetation, killing trees and lakes in Canada. Professor Osborne mentioned that big factories like DuPont spewed a cocktail of toxic fumes that escaped to the atmosphere, only to return as poison to Earth. Now, I never heard of DuPont industry or what its factories produced. The very idea of poison rain was hard for me to think about. As a child in Familia village, rain water was refreshingly sweet. So much that during tropical downpour, as village children, we gathered on the veranda to wait for the rainwater to start falling. We happily stuck out our tongues to catch the cool rainwater running down from the blades of grass. On the thatch roof, it was a lot of fun. But the kind of rain Professor Osborne spoke about sounded different, harsh, deadly, and unnatural. But as I tried to imagine, I could not visualize walking in such a rain let alone drinking the water from it. I had to be careful in this new country not to die a premature death from acid rain, I told myself. Later that day, I went to for lunch at the cafeteria. Everybody looked the same, they were all white. Uh, what I tried to focus on was the essence of the person. So for example, Lynn was nice and always wore a, a, a look of concern on her face. Doris will help me with my uh, bursaries was full of life. I met a student too, among, among the first students that I met was Norman, a graduate student with a bushy beard on his face. He was my first guy to show me where everything was. He later told me he was Jewish. He became like a big brother to me, showing me around and making me feel welcome. Food was alien and different. Ways of doing things were different. I recall going to Canada Post outlet on campus to post a letter to my mother. Afterwards, I discovered I had not enclosed the letter in the envelope, so I rushed back to the post office to see if I could retrieve the envelope. Of course, once posted, I could not get the envelope back. So I worried that my mother would think that I was losing my mind uh, in Canada uh, to send an empty envelope all the way to Africa. 
So that is just a, a very quick, uh, a brief version from my uh, still to be published memoir of my coming to Canada. But I, what I want to say very quickly that in terms of feeling a sense of inclusion, in, in, in terms of feeling welcome, uh, a few things help. Uh, certainly forming relationship with students from diverse backgrounds was a big help. Uh, at Queen's, we had the International Center where students from around the world gathered and where activities showcasing different cultures and traditions took place. Uh, you could drop there at any time when you are not in class and you could hang out with other students, uh, share ideas, study, and so on and so forth. The center was always open. And uh, also students from nearby schools in Kingston were brought to Queen's to listen to us speak about our background. And that helped us stay connected. In my case, it made me feel connected with my roots because I could talk about my own tradition uh, to Canadian students. And it was during one such presentation that a professor who saw me speak to students suggested that I should consider a career in education. And that's what I did the next year and, and joined MacArthur College at Queen's University for teacher education. Uh, personal friendship was very important, uh, as I mentioned, a student like Norm. Uh, later on, uh, I met the Tan teachers from Malaysia, Anke from Germany, Paul Murray from Tanzania, uh, and so on and so forth. And this connection was very, very important. Uh, it was important that the university was supporting me financially because that helped me a lot, not to worry a lot about money uh, because I had to live and survive. So. Uh, that support was truly um, welcome. And then the accessibility by the professors. They were very supportive and encouraging. Uh, and that, that ability to be able to access and talk to the professors about my, my courses and about whatever issues I had uh, helped a lot to support me as well. Now, there were some difficult moments that I want to share. Um, these moments were moments of isolation. Uh, for example, when my grand grandparents passed away, I, you know, I could not really share it with anybody because I did not feel that they would understand what I was going through. So that was a difficult moment for me. Uh, and then the other part that was also isolating was during the holiday, Thanksgiving, reading week, Christmas, um, when other students were gone, uh, the campus was very, very quiet. And that was, uh, you know, that was a time that was very difficult. Now, uh, the people who were supporting me, me made every effort to make sure that I was, you know, I was not alone, but, but I felt that that was a difficult time. Later on, though, as I made more friends, uh, they invited me to their homes. And, and, and so then, you know, the journey was not so hard anymore because I had friends and I could go and visit other people. So basically, that is my experience. And, and I want to give a, a second moment now to uh, turn it to uh, the student panels and, and to welcome them, because I want them to talk about their own experiences too, um, how they have found it here at Western, and how they have managed to move on and to study and to feel welcome and to be part of the diversity and, and inclusion here on campus. So I welcome the students who are members of the panel. Uh, if um, I know that I've got Amin, Freya, uh, Grace, Inara, and I met Inara. Inara was one of the, the first people to welcome me here, by the way. Thank you, Inara. When I came uh, to Western, Inara came and knocked on my door, introduced herself, and she had a lot of great ideas, and, and, and she made me feel welcome uh, here at Western. So thank you for that. Uh, we have Elmon and we have Panache. So. Um, perhaps the students could take time and uh, introduce themselves very briefly, please. So we maybe we start with, okay, yes. All right, go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Panache. I'm a fourth year student at Russia doing BMOS in health science. I'm currently doing a co-op, but in my previous years on campus, I've been a student ambassador. I've been the multicultural plow president. I have also been a career peer and I've done uh, two semesters of research assistance with my professors. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Elmont and I'm currently a second year PhD student in the Department of Geography and Environment and I'm a Sheikh Vanya scholar. 
And I also did my master's here at Western, I completed in 2018. I'm from Zimbabwe. Uh, during my master's, I've been a student counselor in the Society of Graduate Students. Thank you. Thank you, Elmon. And I, I'm sure you will reassure me that uh, I will not die from acid rain. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right, uh, yes, the next person, please. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Amin, and I'm from Iran. Um, I came to Canada in April, and I'm a first year um, master's student in civil and environmental engineering. And um, I'm a part of health and safety advisors in uh, residence buildings. Um, it's great to see you all here. Thank you, Amin. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Grace, and I am from Ecuador. I'm doing a second career in the Bachelor of Arts in Community Development at Brescia University College. And I'm very happy to be here. Well, Welcome, Grace. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have a couple more. Are we done? Um, hi, um, I'm Inara. Um, thank you, Dr. Opio, for introducing me as well. Um, I am an international student from Uganda and I'm currently pursuing an honor specialization in international relations. Um, I'm in my fourth year right now and um, I feel like I've been involved at Western a little bit. Um, I was a residence don for two years and this summer I helped um, plan the academic part of orientation and I'm looking for other ways to get involved in Western campus, um, maybe through advocacy for other international students. Thank you. Thank you, Inara, and thank you again for welcoming me here at Western. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Freya, and I'm a fourth year social science student at Western. I study double major in economics and psychology. Um, I was born and raised in Beijing, China, and I spent most of my life in China. It's actually my third year uh, in Canada because I was back in China for the whole year during the pandemic. Uh, for now, I'm an international peer guide and uh, the academic success program peer leader. Um, both of my two positions at Western are mainly helping the international students and also the first year students to get a more uh, smooth transition to Western. Uh, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Freya. And thank you everyone for introducing yourself. I think we got everybody. Um, it's fantastic to see the diversity that we bring uh, here, right here on the panel. And uh, so I'm very keen to hear your story. You have heard a little bit of mine, uh, but I wanted to hear, let's start with Amin, Priya, Grace, and Inara. Uh, just tell me a little bit what your experience has been like uh, as international students at Western. What, what has it been like? Um, for me, like any other um, international student, um, it was pretty hard at first, you know, getting settled, um, adjusting to the move, getting used to a new, completely new lifestyle and living far away from my family and friends. And also um, culture, culture gap and um, not being as good as uh, um, others at speaking English have been um, making things a little bit uh, challenging for me from time to time. But I've always felt Western support along the way. And on top of all um, support, um, International um, and Student Center has um, helped me a lot um, through amazing programs like um, English conversation program or a peer guide program and other events. Um, as a newcomer, I've, I've constantly been trying to get um, better at communicating in English and get more involved and get to know things better around here. And International Exchange um, Student Center has been always my go-to place when it comes to this stuff. And a shout out to the kind and super friendly staff uh, over there at IES. <laughs> okay, uh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, now very quickly before I, I, I go to, um, uh, to Freya, uh, so, were you able to find the foods that 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 you used to eat uh, around here and and be able to eat? Um, it's a little bit hard to get the materials here. You know, there are there are um, there are ingredients here. I'm trying my best to to get uh, to um, to know the 
spots that um, have Iranian in ingredients to fix my to the uh, to fix the foods here. So yeah, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Do you know how to cook? Yes, kind of. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying. That's, I try my best. That that makes two of us. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll we'll check out our cooking at some point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for that, Ami. Yeah, Freya, go ahead. Um, first of all, I really agree on what Amin said that, uh, um, like there's many challenges and difficulties for the international student for living here. But I would say, like, uh, overall, it, it's a wonderful experience to study at Western as an international student. Uh, especially in my first year, I was living in uh, the residence hall. I live in Perth, and I feel like students are tightly connected at the time. Um, because I never lived in Canada before university. So uh, living at a residence hall and connect with local students and other international students uh, is a very fresh experience for me. Um, but I also, uh, I still have a difficult time at the beginning uh, because I never lived independently before university. So when I have I faced something that never happened before, I was so easily to freak out. And I remember there's a time that I booked a flight ticket, but it charged me twice on credit card and I don't know what happened and what should I do at that time. Uh, I remember it was very late at night and I don't have anyone to help. So I went to the front desk in Perth Hall and the lady at the front desk uh, spent hours helping me to deal with that problem. Uh, I was, I really appreciate her. Um, like she really helped me a lot. Um, not only the lady at the front desk, there are many people at Western are very supportive and willing to help international students. Um, I was receiving lots of helps and supports in my uh, in in my entire time at Western. Uh, that becomes that becomes the reason why I applied for volunteering as an international peer guide because I want to be uh, supportive and help the international students as much as I can. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Freya, for telling that story. And and did you get your money back, by the way? Oh yes, I yes I did. <laughs> Oh, th thank goodness for that. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, very quickly, uh, do, do you do you have a, a group of uh, international students that you are mentoring now and helping them to settle down as well? Uh, yes, the um, uh, kind of because what the international peer guys do is we uh, connect with the new international student who never live in Canada, and we are like providing. Uh, resources and help, for example, like uh, if they want to know how to like, uh, set a phone plan where they want to find somewhere to live, uh, we can uh, provide some uh, information for that. Oh, thank you so much for that. Thank you, Priya. Thank well, you. we go to Grace. Thank you, Dr. Bio. Um, well, my experience as an international student at Western has been both uh, challenging and also a road to discovery. Uh, as Amin said, uh, the part of the language is something very significant, especially at, in the, at the first years. Um, currently, I have uh, more than three years uh, in Western. And of course, I had to push myself to speak out in class because I am actually very conversational in my native uh, language, Spanish. So I felt the drive to participate, but I uh, had this little nervousness because it was not my, my first language. But also that helped me develop uh, more uh, bravery. And uh, yes, after years, I, I became more or better at English, but especially academic English. Um, I wanted to make a point about uh, English that is conversational and not necessarily academic and how that is different from academic English. So uh, because the English you speak with your with other international students and especially with uh, more native speakers, uh, it has more of a cultural local cultural uh, component. So it has taken me uh, even now um, until now more time to develop those skills to be able to establish relationships with uh, with more native speakers. So, and I've been very happy in the last semesters that I have been able to become involved in more project-based courses because those require students to be uh, involved in a work relationship with other students 
for for a semester or for a year so that has helped me a lot in this other um, kind of english which is conversational and more um, casual informal yes so in that sense the language has been a challenge and uh, also culturally because of the culture shock but also it has helped me and in this uh, part i mean it has helped me discover myself and discover many things that it has helped me discover difference and become curious about it to try to work in that context of difference and for example i have learned that different doesn't necessarily mean wrong it's just different the people are good even if they have different ways of doing things and yes and also it has helped me discover myself and my identities because i have compared the ways that for example, my, my race or ethnicity is construed in my home country, Ecuador, and how these aspects of me have been construed in, in Canadian culture, in Canadian in the Canadian society. So it has pushed me to um, better define my identities in that respect. So yes, that's pretty much what my experience has been as an international student. And lastly, I wanted to give a shout out to the international, uh, Western International and International and Exchange Student Center because they have uh, truly been a support. And uh, yes, from knowledge about where to get winter clothes and how to get to those shops uh, to being able to know other international students and cultures, which has been very enriching. So, and as, as you said, um, um, Opio, uh, holidays are a difficult moment, and the international Western International has been very significant, helping in that uh, to feel connected with others in those special moments of the of the year. Thank you so much, Great. Uh, very quickly, before I move on to, um, uh, uh, I think yeah, to Inara, um, very quick question. One of the things that I stayed with me, even to this day, is my language. I speak Luo, which is my mother tongue from northern Uganda. And, 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 and sometimes I find myself uh, thinking in English, but sometimes I'm thinking in, in Luo. Uh, and, 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 and it just depends on what it is I'm, I'm thinking about. And even when I'm thinking about concepts, uh, you know, uh, I might find myself thinking in Luo first. And, and do you do you go back and forth between Spanish and English in your thinking as you work through your project, when you're thinking through ideas? Actually, the more I am able to be in conversations with uh, native speakers, or let's say only English, the less I I think in, in Spanish. Okay. But yes, but there are those differences that they are still exist and. Sometimes I end up uh, speaking Spanish, but with some English grammar. And my partner says, hey, you're not speaking proper Spanish or, or the other way. Like, but I, it's not, it's difficult. I, I tell him it's different. It's difficult to say this idea that I want in Spanish. English is more proper. So, <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank, very, thank, thank yes. you so much. Thank you for that. Okay. We go to Inara to answer that uh, bit as well. What has your experience been like in Ara? Uh, my experience has been like a, co a roller coaster of adulting and growing up. <laughs> um, it is uh, moving away from home like everybody else. And like the first thing was like arriving to Canada without my parents and not having a phone and a bank account set, but figuring out how to get to Western and the bus system and everything else. So it was a really big adjustment. And um, culture shock as well. I was very surprised to see people drinking water out of the fountain. <laughs> I was confused what that was. <laughs> and it was really funny um, that because that was my first thing I saw when I saw the airport. And um, another really thing that has stayed to me, stay with me is like how being in Canada has taught me a lot of resilience and like appreciate the kind of resilience international students have to experience. For example, um, navigating the pandemic by yourself, not being able to see your parents, but staying connected in a different way. And it's 
along the way, I got I made so many relationships that has enriched me as a person. For example, I, even if I couldn't see my mother that I miss a lot, I had like a Canadian mother who would always invite me for Thanksgiving or check on me during the pandemic or um, a mentor from my workplace uh, called Brent, who um, really showed me that the sky is a limit on how you can be creative and express your ideas while being true to yourself. And so I feel like throughout this day, uh, my time in Canada have become so much more confident. It has helped me find my voice and like teach me that um, I can experience and learn so many new things um, while experiencing it with other international students as well. Wow, now uh, I'm not gonna let it pass. Num number one, I'm gonna not acknowledge that there is a Ugandan flag behind you there. <laughs> That's a flag that I grew up with. Um, but secondly, you grew up on Kololo Hill, not Kololo Hill. Uh, is it Kololo Hill in Kampala? Um, it is old Kampala Hill. Like you know, it's all around Kibuli area there. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so tell me, um, when, 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 when you came here, uh, what part of Kampala did you find here? Did you see anything that looks like Kampala or, or there was nothing at all? Um, I think the biggest part of Kampala that I found here was other Ugandans because it made me feel like home. And um, this is how like I gained so much a stronger connection and I found a community and family from here. So um, just like um, an example was I was uh, working at a residence dawn at Essex Hall and then I heard a very Ugandan accent at guest registration and I was instantly drawn to David. Um, uh, David Walugembe was a PhD student to turn out that his PhD, um, I think, um, from the Makuri School of Public Health was my friend's dad. And so like reminiscing and talking about like small things about Uganda or like going to the like African store and making um, posho and beans, <laughs> which is uh, like Ugandan delicacies. So that was very nice. Um, but just a reflecting point was that um, one question that I realized that international students sometimes have to really explain from or find an answer to is where you're from, <laughs> because it's like, okay, should I say my nationality, where I was born, where my parents are from, where did I grow up, <laughs> and where have I lived? So I think that was like the biggest crisis I had to answer the question of where are you from. I think that is a good point, and we'll come to that probably if we have a little bit of time at the end, and I will probably ask all the panelists, you know, to, to, to talk a little bit about that experience of where you're from question. Uh, but thank you so much, Inara. And uh, I, I have another set of questions that I want to ask um, the others to, to chime in. Uh, and at Western, we say we embrace diversity and inclusivity. Uh, has that been your experience? So this is for Amin, Grace, El Elmon, and Panache. So, Amin, we, we, we start with you again. Yes, definitely. It's been my experience with staff and employees here at Western. I've never felt, um, I've never felt, uh, um, felt left out or um, anything I, I can think of, like huge thing, um, because, for, um, because of coming from overseas. But um, you know, there there have been some there have been times when um, when I have um, um, when I felt not um, included as much, for example, um, in the conversations with our younger peers. <laughs> but I but I feel like um, we can't we can't completely put it on um, anyone else. You know, I'm pretty sure a huge part of it is because of. The, um, the culture gap that I mentioned or um, not being as articulate as I should be. So, so very quickly, what are those moments when you don't feel included? What, 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 what would be going on at that moment? Um, you mean in um, personal? Yeah, when, when, when you have not felt included, you said, you know, with the younger peers, sometimes you don't feel included. Like what, what would be happening at that moment, that specific moment? Uh, Um, maybe there was some, um, um, some cultural related concert converse conversations that, um, because of, because I was, I, I wasn't born in Canada, I couldn't, um, contribute to, mm -hmm. um, or, um, the things that, um, 
because of the culture gap, I, I, I wasn't aware of. Not, again, not, not that um, they do that um, um, intentionally. It's, it happens, you know. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for that. Okay, we go to uh, Grace. Thank you, uh, Dr. Aloya. Uh, my experience has been that um, I've seen that the Western community and campus is diverse. I've been able to see good diversity and heterogeneity in the classrooms. For example, I've been able to see a presence of, of First Nation students and also their demonstrations, which is something I have valued a lot in my learning and road to discovery. And also, for example, in the eateries, I've been very happy to see people. Uh, I right now don't remember how, but we we found we found out that we were Spanish-speaking people, and and we just say hi every day. I go get lunch, <laughs> and um, and um, inclusivity. Also, I've been. Um, That in that part, of, if I found it, I have found it a little bit more difficult um, to integrate, as I said a little bit more, a little before, uh, with uh, my native classmates, my native speaking classmates. Uh, and uh, yes, that, all that despite the fact that I've been very happy to see also fairs where there are ethnic specific clubs from Western, and I've been able to learn about the Jewish community and uh, other communities. And also, for example, I remember uh, very nicely before the pandemic, uh, the Chinese festival, I think it was, the Chinese New Year, that they had uh, something very colorful and festive. So these little things of diversity and color, I've, I've been able to see them in Western and they have been very um, enlightening and yes. But in, with respect to inclusivity, um, I had shared this with other uh, before. Um, I have thought that uh, hopefully there could be a way that there was some inclusion of, of international knowledge and, and ideas also on the basis of the areas of study. So yes, yeah, so that maybe that can be a way that international students can connect with their uh, Canadian-born native parts, um, counterparts on the basis of the, the area of study, which is a commonality in, in the department. So yes, that's, that's been my experience. Thank you so much, Great. Thank you for that. Uh, Elmon? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. 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 Opio. And, uh, my experience has been, uh, you know, it's kind of a mixture. Uh, I want to talk briefly when I arrived in Canada in 2017 as a master's student in public administration. And then I'll talk about my experience uh, as a PhD student. And one of the biggest struggles I had uh, in terms of academic wise is to, you know, to integrate because the things that I was learning in public administration was largely Canadian based. So I felt excluded in class discussions because I was not, you know, well versed with the Canadian context. So I was quick now like to engage my professors, you know, this is my experience and this is how I feel in class because I was the only international student. And they were open enough to say, you know what, you, you can bring on your home experiences and then we, you know, in the class discussions, we can find ways to, to explore, you know, the common areas where they, you know, where there are common areas in, in terms of your experience back home and, you know, what, what does that mean in your own context? And it was very helpful for me because I ended up, you know, participating in class and being able to share my own experiences. And then, then fast forward, the decision to come to Western for my PhD was largely influenced by that flexibility in terms of the professors themselves in my academic unit, like now in my PhD, in terms of inclusion, because my PhD research focuses on my own country. I'm, I'm not forced to, to, to do studies that focus on North America. I'm exploring my, my, my home country. I go back and do my food work. So, so I'm able to bring in a different perspective 
you know, to other students, I'm able to share my own experience. This is all, oh, this is how things work in my own country. And I think socially as well, uh, the, I think the International Center has been very grateful in terms of creating programs that make international students feel at home, like the peer guide program. It was very helpful for me because coming from a conservative, relatively conservative culture, you know, from Zimbabwe, and then a, connecting to somebody who is able to show me, oh, this is what you do. If you wanna go and get a phone and something like that, it was very helpful. And I think for me as well, I think Western International is also trying like establishing the Africa Institute, which I found to be a very good platform where students that have got interest in Africa research or something, they come together, not, not even with Canadian students that have got an interest in Africa. It's, and rather than academics, it is it's also a platform to share cultural experiences and so forth. And that, you know, you, you can, integrate better. So that, that is briefly my experience in terms of diversity and inclusion. Well, thank you so much, Elmon. Um, very interesting to see that even today, much like it was for me 40 years ago, that the openness and the welcome of uh, professors do make a difference. That, that in fact, when, when, when uh, faculty is open and engaging with students, it makes a huge difference, especially for international students, because then they feel included. So uh, I'm happy to hear that. Thank you for that. Panash, Panash. Okay, so um, my experience has been, you know, I feel like Western is very diverse. Like everywhere I go, there's always different students. And also in terms of like help with academic advisors, if I needed help with my C number and everything like that, I've gotten so much help and it's been great, but I've also experienced a lot of microaggressions that I feel like need to be addressed. For example, in my first year, I had this girl, every time she saw me in the cafeteria, she would come and sit down and start asking me about the hunger in Africa and how I survived it. And I like, I, it's, it's good curiosity, but some of the questions that I would get about whether we have cars, whether we have roads, it's like people still have this idea that Africa is like all of us just live in a bush somewhere, you know? Um, and also it, it includes having like one of, like two of my professors spend the whole semesters like just pointing at me when I raise my hand because they don't want to say my name because it's difficult for them. And I'm like, the least you could do is try, you know? And it's also having some of my professors have like, you know, their statistics, they're showing for academics and they compare Canada, US, and then Africa and Asia. And I'm like, Africa has 54 countries. At least the least you can do is have one country that you pick. And then when you're showing the research, let's compare it to one. Because if we're comparing things to countries, then let's just have countries instead of having a whole continent representing, represented compared to, you know, countries. And then also when I first came like to Canada, I, I really wanted to take Swahili because all of my friends were in the US, they were taking Swahili and it was the second most spoken language in Africa. And I couldn't find it anywhere on campus. It was so difficult. Or just finding a, an African history um, class to take, it, it's difficult on like most of the campuses. So I feel like there's still some work that can be done, you know, to be more inclusive and, you know, to have professors, you know, move from showing, when, when we're talking about Africa or Asia, showing this uh, one hungry child as a picture, changing the narrative. Because the reason why we have, I feel in my opinion, a lot of our students still thinking about Africa as something that's just, you know, a bush is because that's the narrative that's continued to be shown. You know, every time that comes up, they just show that one thing. But then one of my favorite TED Talks is called The Danger of a Single Story by Chimamanda. A, a place has so many stories. Of course, we have hunger in the continent, but we also have so many success stories. So I would love for campus to show more narratives for all of international students to remember that China is not the whole of Asia. There's so much more in every place. So I'd say that's my experience. Thank you so much, Panache, for, for, for putting that out there, because I think, I think you touched on a very important point, which is that sometimes, you know, in the narrative of, 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 of North America, Africa is reduced to a country. Uh, yes, it has got all these uh, countries. And I might add, if 
even within the countries themselves, there are so many languages. I, that's why when I said I speak my mother tongue duo, I was very specific that it is spoken in northern Uganda because you drive 50 kilometers down the road towards Kampala, south towards Kampala, and the language changes. And I'm not talking about dialect. I'm talking about a complete linguistic change, uh, you know, a, a, a complete language. So, so it's not like the dialect, you know, the language roots are the same and it is just a matter of the dialect that changes. No, we are talking about an entire language. So I've always said, and, and I'm like you, uh, Panache, I, I wanted to uh, be able to learn at least another Bantu language, you know, um, from the South. I came from the North, I speak Luo. I always wanted to learn um, uh, uh, Luganda, which uh, I know Inara speaks a little bit probably of Luganda. Um, at least that is, you know, she greeted me in Luganda, uh, which I don't speak because I did not stay long enough in Kampala area to pick up the language, but I've always been interested. So you make a very good point that we, there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of work to begin to show that, you know, the world is a much bigger place and with all the complexities and all the diversities, and we need to be able to reflect them here at Western. So that is what uh, the, the you know uh, the office of uh, uh, of EDI is is working very hard to do to begin to create that opportunity where we bring in other perspective, other narrative, other voices, uh, so that students, staff, and faculty, everybody have opportunity to hear and to 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 see the diversity that, that is out there and also here at Western. So thank you for, so much for bringing that up. All right, um, so we go to uh, another question. Um, and this is a question that I'm going to ask Elmon, Freya, Inara, and Panache yourself. Uh, if you could wave a magic wand and change one thing at Western today, what would you change? So I'm going to leave it open. Any one of you can start. Yeah, uh, for me, I my suggestion could be a bit radical, but I think we need to move away from cosmetic diversity and to real. In terms, I would want to see if it in the academic units themselves, more inclusion and diversity, because in some departments, they, 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 it might be like 100% white. And then it, it creates a, a challenge for students to feel welcome. I'm not saying they might be a, a, you know, bad professors, no, but I'm saying it, it could help, you know, the university if it could, you know, in terms of their recruitment policies, you know, try to make sure that there's a balance, you know, so, so that, you know, we create that, that, that environment at that particular micro level. Thank you. Thank you for that, certainly, and I agree with you, and it is an, an, a concept, an idea that I've been, uh, you know, one of the first thing I've engaged is how do we begin to include uh, diversity in the rank of our faculty and staff? Uh, and and, and one, one area is in the recruitment process itself, where uh, in my mind, uh, you have to make sure that they, you know, the, the candidates that you are interviewing reflect diversity. Because you know, if, if you don't have that, then, then already that, that's problematic. But the question then becomes, how do you know you have diversity. So that's a process that I am engaging right now, uh, right across campus, is that there should be opportunity for self-identification. When somebody applies to Western, they should be able to self-identify themselves. That, you know, I'm black or I am a person of color or I'm a woman uh, and so on and so forth. Because that then allows us to know that the pool of candidates that we are interviewing for any opportunity, whether it is faculty, whether it is staff, uh, that there is diversity because if there is no diversity, then the question is why isn't there? You know, and 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 in the why it may mean that uh, we need to recalibrate. We may need to begin to target uh, you know uh, different areas so that we let people know out there that Western is open to diversity. You see, so so thank you for bringing that up. Okay, uh, next person. 
Um, I'd like to add, um, it's, I, I think of it as like a total norm change in a way that we're, Western is more proactive and intentional um, to, of its policies towards in, improving international student experiences or making Western more inclusive. And like examples I had just reflecting from Elman's and Panache's conversation is like, from an academic standpoint, we should make active efforts to decolonize the content we're learning in classes so that us ourselves and other students can also unlearn our existing biases. And like more, again, as you mentioned earlier, more diversity in academic programs, for example, having more diverse faculty because it's very impactful when a student like myself can see a professor like myself because it makes it feel like it is possible for me to get there. And um, there are also just some cultural levels that you can connect. And it is like also embracing um, diversity in what we learn as like academic programs. like. A Black and African studies program would be so valuable for international students, African, Black, and allies who want to learn more about Africa, more learn more about African languages. Similarly, like an Asian studies program that give all of these opportunities, because when I think of it is that we're all like global leaders, and at some point the world is going to be so diverse that we're going to interact with different people. And so uh, when we are enriching ourselves, we're very much prepared to be successful and powerful leaders in our future. Um, and other thoughts that I also had was from a financial standpoint where there's more increased work study positions and um, uh, financial supports for especially international students and marginalized groups, because we do recognize that some international students have to pay three times or up to four times more of their tuition. And there's limited opportunities, either because of their nationality or because of what is available. And sometimes they are such, um, very bright students that just fall through the cracks just because of like the systematic barriers that they face. And um, I thought another thing that would be very important was from a very social standpoint where um, there is increased international student consultations and policies that are gonna be made at Western or increased anti-racist training for all the students, student leaders and faculties, simply because um, inclusivity is just beyond as, um, Elman mentioned that cosmic, it's something, oh, cosmetic, I can't remember, but something along the lines of like, we want to see valuable change that's systematic and it's, it's really enriching student experience in a manner that they're treated as one of like being one at Western. Wow, you bring so many very valid points. And, and I, I like to point out that uh, Inara, when you met me, uh, and if you don't mind me saying so, that one of the very first ideas that you brought forward was black studies uh, and you had already had a complete uh, if i remember correctly about eight pages a uh, well-typed uh, plan of what um, courses would be con would constitute a major in black studies and i also would like to add that that idea as in died in fact if anything now and, and i know you're aware of it that uh, this is being pushed forward. Uh, tomorrow, I believe it is, I will be meeting with the Dean um, uh, and, and, and with uh, faculty members to begin to look at the idea of a major in Black Studies, uh, which would address some of the issues in gap of knowledge, in, in knowledge, in terms of uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, Black or Black people, or even when we talk about the African continent, for example, what does that really mean? And I think that will begin, would be a step forward. So, uh, and, and I know that, uh, y you know, you will be invited to be part of that uh, committee when it gets going and will be getting going shortly. So thank you for that. Uh, and, and, and yes, uh, there, there is a lot to be done in terms of supporting students financially, uh, international students. I think that is an area that I want to learn more about because I don't know as much. Uh, I'm learning a lot as quickly as I can, but I, I agree with you that in what I've heard, you know, there, there are students who do need the support and, and that, that support needs to be given. So thank you so much for that. All right, um, who is next? Priya? Uh, yeah, I can go next. Um, I would like to uh, focus my answer more on the day-to-day -day student interaction at campus. 
Uh, I'm Chinese and most of my friends are Chinese international students as well. Um, I noticed there's a phenomenon that when Chinese students like hanging out together or even uh, having a group discussion at class, it is very normal to see that we are uh, only speak Mandarin. Uh, I feel like although we are used to behave in this way, it was it exclude other people uh, who don't speak Mandarin from the conversation. Um, excluding other people, even unintentionally, is equivalent to excluding ourselves from the local community. Uh, it, was, it was like building a boundary and it's transmitted the message that we refuse to talk with other people. And, and uh, as a Chinese student, I can totally understand why, uh, why we only speak Mandarin as some circumstances. And sometimes people don't speak English is because we are not confident or we are not uh, that comfortable to speak. But I really want to encourage uh, all of the international students who, uh, whose first language is not English um, to speak more, especially when the English speakers are around, because um, no matter how our English capability is, um, by doing so, we are showing the, uh, the openness and welcome. Uh, so uh, for the question, the thing I want to be changed is breaking the boundary or breaking the wall between the groups and groups of people. Um, that's all I want to share about this question. Um, that is quite interesting, Freya. Um, I, 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 you know, you, you turn it upside down. Usually it is, you know, uh, that the international students feel, uh, I, you know, feel, feel isolated or not welcome because uh, the other student kind of build a barrier. But here you, 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 you turn it upside down by saying, look, by speaking in Mandarin, uh, you're building a wall that does not allow others to be able to be part of the conversation. And I agree with you. Now, I also would be the first to defend speaking in Mandarin because I, I love speaking in actually when I can. Uh, it is my language and, and, and it's a language that I have to keep, uh, keep, keep at it. Otherwise, I'll lose it. But I agree with you 100% that when we are in a logical you know, group of people, that, that to speak in, in, in other languages, that, that cut off people, uh, it, it does not make it welcoming. So I would, I would be the first to, to agree with that, that to be inclusive, that we, 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 we try to speak in the language that everybody can speak so that we can, we can share the experience. We can share our experiences. So thank you so much for that. Thank, thank you. you. And I think we have one more person for that question, right? Yes. So um, yeah. yeah, I'll say, so in my first year, uh, so from Zimbabwe, I did A-levels and I did chemistry. So for those who know A-levels, it's technically you do first year of college. So they gave me a credit in chemistry because I had gotten an A in chemistry. So one of the days I was in a study room uh, and some girls were studying and I was just also studying and they were struggling with the chemistry question and I helped them. I like, I just told them the answer and they all looked at me like they didn't believe me and they, they went on to continue discussing the question and looking up the answer. So that made me feel like, you know, like just like I was not exactly welcomed in that situation. And so the words that I would like to leave for everybody across campus is that our differences are not our deficiencies. And just because I have an accent does not mean that I am less than. So just, you know, so that we all treat each other the same, the same way you're smart, the same way that we got into Western, the same way you got in is the same way I also got in. And I want like my fellow students to understand and remember that. Thank you so much, Panache. So uh, we have a little bit of time, and and I just want to come back to that question, uh, which which was raised early on, and I think it was um, could have been you, Panache, who raised that. The where are you from question. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, I laugh because I still get asked that question too, and 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 I still struggle with it, even after all these years, forty years later. Uh, and I struggle with it for two reasons. Number one, I, I, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, is it because of my accent that you know somebody is asking where I'm from, or they are, are they really curious about knowing more about me? Uh, and 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 so so and and if they, you know, it's just my accent. 
uh, what does that really mean? So I have always, it depends on where, uh, you know, the situation, let me put it that way. Sometimes if I'm asked where I am from, my answer would be from Newmarket, which is where my home is, <laughs> north of Toronto. Uh, and then that way it will force the person to clarify whether they meant where am I really originally from? Uh, I, you know, uh, and, and, and if that was the question that was being asked, well, then, then they, they should ask it. Um, but but I'm, I'm not keen to, uh, to, to, to clarify it unless they let me know what exactly they were aiming at. Because, uh, you know, maybe they meant where am I from? Yeah, from Newmarket. You know, I'm not from London. And, and I still go home every, every weekend. So, so that is the question. Where are you from? How do you handle that question? Any one of you? Um, so in the summer, I worked uh, at Pila Nonprofit for EDI, and I was doing some research. And the director that I worked with um, told me something that I have kept in my mind. And she said, sometimes the question, where are you from, automatically suggests that you, me you mean that I am not from here. So I think, like you said, it depends on the situation. And she mentions that if you're starting a relationship with somebody, it's better that the first time you meet, you don't get exactly get to like, where are you from? In that like, where are you from question, but just get to know them. And then as the relationship builds up, you can now go and be like, ah, I noticed that you have an accent. Um, are you from Canada or you, you, you grew up like you were born somewhere else? That way it doesn't sound like you're suggesting that I'm not from here, right? So I find that it depends with the situation Sometimes it's, it's you're in a situation where it feels like the person is just like your accent, you're not from here. But some people are from here and they do have accents, you know? So I think it's a very tricky question and it always depends with what situation you're in. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Panache. Uh, anybody else want to throw in there? Um, um, I, oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I kind of use it as an avenue to say that I can have many identities and every part of my intersectional identity just builds up to me being a, an amazing person. So when someone asks you, where are you from? I say Uganda first, because that's where it's an avenue to educate them that you can have people from different backgrounds, from different countries to still be the identity that they identify with if that makes sense. And sometimes just breaking that barrier of talking about my experiences and being more open, it kind of builds an avenue where I can learn from the other. So while in one way I do experience and I do understand like from the accent, I have also experienced subtle microaggressions uh, when I say I'm from Uganda and how it's like a debate on, on like whether I am really from Uganda or not. Um, it's, it, it teaches you a lot about the person you're across talking to. And that's where you can gauge, is this a safe space for me to continue this kind of a relationship or this is where I made my, I made my new best friend. So um, in a way, especially like when it said Western, sometimes it's, it is, I do say where I'm from and I say I'm from Uganda because that's where I get to know other students and learn more about them. Thank you. Thank you, Nara. Um, I just wanted to make, um, quickly mention that um, it would be great if um, people um, could um, separate um, people from their governments, right? If if your if the um, government of your country do something, it's not um, necessarily doesn't mean that you you go go along with that. So if um, it would be this, it it, it was a thing that um, came to my mind. To, and share with anybody else. Uh, that is a great point. I mean, meaning that you know the, the, the politics of a country it does not define the individuals who live in, in that country. You know, um, you know, you, you're from Iran. Uh, you're a Persian. There's a lot of great things about the Persian culture that we can talk about, but not the politics. We don't have to talk about the politics. You see, so so you make a great point. So thank you so much for that. Anybody else? Hello, uh, I can. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's it's a complex question, and 
at least in my story, when I've been asked that, um, I've just answered that I, I was born in Ecuador. However, um, I'm not sure if that really means that I am completely uh, from Ecuador because I also spent um, a year in Toronto. So I have a lot of uh, experiences about Toronto. And uh, also I feel very much at home at London. So uh, I take that opportunity to, to speak a little bit about my culture when they ask me where I was, where I was, uh, where I am from, but I answer where I was born. And yes, it is a complex uh, question because sometimes I've been really curious about when I heard, when I hear an, uh, an accent, I've been very curious to learn about the background of this person because I am very interested in different cultures and different origins. So, but I've been afraid to ask the question because I know all these connotations that it may produce in the person. So I've actually taken the approach that Panash mentioned, um, that uh, I think an advisor told her, to not ask that question like right away, but try to get to know the person. And maybe the person themselves will tell their story. And as part of that, you will get what you were wondering about. And, but the last thing that, that Panash's advisor told her that, saying, I noted that you have an accent. Uh, were you born here or, or not? That's a, also a very, very important and useful um, way of asking a question. But after hearing from the person about their stories. Thank you, Grace. Thank you so much. Uh, anybody else want to have a shot at this question before we, uh, we turn it over to the, the Q&A in a moment? All right, thank you so much for this uh, truly uh, beautiful responses and, uh, and wealth of information, uh, but more important, the conversation, um, different perspective uh, and contributing so freely. Um, thank you so much. So uh, I think we have some Q&A. Uh, and so I'd like to turn it over to Leslie Oliver uh, to take, take, take it away, Leslie, are you here? here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Aloya. Um, we had a question in the Q&A, and I think, I mean, answered it in writing, but I think it's a, I think it's a great question. Um, so for, for the panelists, um, could you tell us uh, what has been your experience in making friends with Canadian students, domestic students, uh, versus international students? Anybody willing to go first? Uh, I would just take it, sorry, I, would, I, would, I wanted to just very quickly say that um, I, I, I can back to my time 40 years ago. Uh, it was certainly making friends with Canadian students was equally important as making friends with um, international students. So I was able to make friends, um, you know, uh, both with Canadian students and international students. Thank you. Sorry, uh, Panasha, you go ahead. Yeah, so I'll say like, I find for a lot of international students, it's easier for them to make friends with people from where they come from. But that wasn't the case for me because there wasn't a lot of Zimbabweans at Russia. So I had to go out, out of my comfort zone. And I find for me, making friendships with other international students and Canadians was equally the same because they were all people with different cultures than mine. So I'll say right now, I have a very diverse group of friends. I have Canadian friends. I have friends from the Caribbean countries. I have friends from other African countries. And it's, it's challenging in the same way. I mean, it's less challenging with other African friends because when I mention certain things that like the academic system, like going to um, form one instead of going to grade eight, they understand so easily. And I find that sometimes with my Canadian friends, I have to explain so much. So I, that's like some of the differences that I did, but it's not very challenging when you're friends because you're doing it like uh, Inara mentioned in a safe space. So you're doing it with somebody who understands you and who is your friend. Thanks, Panache. Anybody else want to address that question? I can go. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh. Uh, thank you. I guess I just wanted to add to what Panache said that like, um, I think 
it's been a lot more easier for me to make friends with other fellow Africans because we just have this instant connection of like, oh, where you're from, what was your childhood experience like? And um, things like she mentioned, again, like um, when you're talking about film one, you don't have to explain or when it's like certain things that are so African that you do in your mannerisms <laughs> that like you joke over. So it's like it instantly makes it feel like home because they are the immediate reminder of what home is like. And so there is like the subconscious connection that it's very quicker for me to make more African friends or like um, international Indian friends as well, because we do have the cultural connection. But that um, doesn't disregard that the importance as Dr. Aloya mentioned of Canadian friends, because throughout my process, um, I, have I grew up a lot. I came here when I was 18 years old and now I'm 22 years old. And there's a lot of growing up I did in the process where everybody that came into my life added some value to it and to recognize that there's so much to learn from the Canadian students. It was, it was challenging initially because of the culture shock and just looking for comfort, but it's, it's, it also talks about how resilient inter international students are in making a new community their own and then blending in. So in, throughout the process, um, I was able to make find a lot of Canadian students, immigrants who also have similar experiences that um, as myself that we can connect with also or other just Canadian students that I meet in class and we have a lot of uh, common interests that, or things we're passionate about. So in a way, uh, being in Canada and being around in a very diverse environment taught me to learn more about the individual and what I like about them and how we connect and then where they're from or their background kind of becomes secondary. I love when you said everyone added value to it. I, I really, uh, that resonates with me. Thank you. Priya, did you have something to add? Uh, yes, uh, I just have a little short answer. I agree with Pinesha and Inara that um, I would say like uh, focus more on the individual is, uh, rather than the country or culture because when I was in my first year, I feel like uh, making a local uh, friends is a, like a big challenge for me because uh, I expect the culture differences is so large, but actually it's not. Um, for example, like I find that people are talking about constellation uh, when people are first mad. Uh, so it's a, like a global uh, first mad question. And yeah, we are pretty similar with, uh, um, in every culture. So um, focus more on individual. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Thanks, Freya. Um... Another question. Oh, Grace, were you going to say? Perfect. Go yes, right ahead. Thank you, Leslie. Um, I was. I wanted to say that I think for me it's been easier to be, make friends with people from the international community, um, probably because we have gone through similar uh, paths and share similar situations, uh, even if they are not from my own country. Because as Panache situation, also there are not many Ecuadorians in London. Uh, so it's been good to make friends with international um, the international community, and but also with uh, Canada-born uh, Canada classmates, especially. Um, well, I've noted noted that when I've been able to make Canadian-born friends, um, they've also had um, like let's say not an Anglo-Saxon background. Yes, so. Um, they have also the, the cultural components from London and Canada, but maybe they can relate a little bit more to, to other cultures and to, to accents. So in those cases, it's been easier for me to make friends with the domestic students, um, but not, not, with, not too much with most of them. So I would really appreciate to be able to connect more with, with more domestic friends. Thank you so much, Grace. I think that brings us up to uh, our time. So I'll hand it back to you, Opio. Thank you, Leslie. And thank you, every single one of the student panelists uh, for giving freely of their time this morning uh, to talk to us, to have a conversation, but I think to educate us also and to bring the fullness and the richness of what we have here uh, at Western. Uh, and, and, and the perspective that they bring uh, from various backgrounds, I think that is what makes this university so unique and so welcoming. So thank you so much. I, I hope that we'll have opportunity. In fact, I'd like to invite you 
uh, we'll have to find time and I'll buy you the dinner. I'll, I'll pay for it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there uh, so that we can continue this conversation. Uh, I'll find uh, the time that works for every one of you. I know you're all busy right now with studying, but I'm sure we can find some time uh, just to get together and, and continue this conversation. But thank you so much uh, for your time. And, and I also want to thank the team at Western International. It, is, it, it takes a lot to pull something like this together. Uh, it's a lot of work. I know the work that went behind the scene, but know that your effort is well rewarded because this opportunity where we have opportunity to converse, to share, uh, to make different voices come across campus, that is what, uh, what, what diversity is all about. So thank you, Liz, Laporte, and your team uh, for this great opportunity. And I wish everybody a beautiful um, International Week 2021. So I turn it over to me. Thank you so much for your uh, your very kind uh, words, Opio. And and I just want to echo your comments about the students. So uh, to each of you, to Amin, to Inara, Grace, Freya, Elmond, uh, Panache, um, thank you for sharing your stories. Uh, and and for your candor, uh, it's it's not always easy to 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 share such personal uh, information and and stories and and particularly when there's things that you know maybe didn't go as well. And but it, your your feedback is critical to the work that we have to do. And so uh, I really really appreciate uh, your your willingness to join us today and and for all of your great stories. Um, it really was a great discussion to kick off International Week, and, and really this is, as, as uh, Opio just mentioned, it's really just the beginning, or we hope that it is the beginning of deeper conversation, uh, and really the ongoing work uh, that Western is engaged in to improve the experiences of, of all of our students. And so uh, we really uh, look forward to continued discussion and to, um, to uh, engaging all of you and your peers and your colleagues uh, in further discussion and ensuring that the international uh, student voice is uh, uh, is amplified and is a bit stronger in uh, in at the table as we're looking at uh, discussing you know policies and processes and programming uh, that will really uh, add value and add so much richness to the uh, to the experience of all students and staff and faculty at Western. And so uh, a quick shameless plug here uh, for, for the students and also for those that are listening that, that we have engaged in an international student survey called the International Student Barometer and all international students on main campus would have received uh, an individualized link to that survey. And so uh, I would ask that um, all of you uh, fill that out and, and encourage other students and your peers uh, to fill that out, to encourage for staff and faculty, uh, your students uh, and, and any interactions that you have that, that you bring this up because this is really an important um, benchmark and important feedback for Western in terms of, of getting to hear more stories uh, and, and in a way where uh, students feel that they've, they're, they're safe in sharing those. So um, we really, really are looking forward to, uh, to receiving that feedback. Um, and finally, just a, a quick reminder to visit the International Week website at internationalweek.uwo.ca on your screen uh, and to see the other events that we have planned for the week and to join our digital event platform. Um, for those who are participating in our passport contest, the code for this event is welcoming. The code is welcoming. So again, my deepest appreciation and thanks to, uh, to Dr. Aloya, uh, to Amin, Grace, Elmond, Freya, Inara, and Panache, and to Leslie uh, for moderating our, um, our Q&A, and also to my team, to Crystal, to uh, Monica, Rachel, Chris, uh, for all of your great work behind the scenes. Um, we really are grateful for everyone's time today and for your participation. That concludes the opening event of um, Western International Week. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Take good care. <laughs>